What's up, guys? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Welcome to the stream, everybody. It is Sunday afternoon. It is 1 p.m. where I am, but I know it's evening for all you European folks. This is the European stream. I do it at a time that's convenient for you guys. How's it going, Jack? Do and License to Drive got here in time for the music. Is this the stream of the video receivers, or is that later? No, no, no. Joe Dougherty, you are thinking of Live You FPV stream. That is a whole other channel. I'm, that's not me. That's Leave UFPV. We'll talk more about that later. It's very, very bad form for me to start my own stream by telling you guys about a much more exciting... St no. <laughs> How's it going, guys? <clears throat> I'm really, really excited about this stream. In case you're new here, you're not going to notice any difference because you've never, you've never done this before. But if you are used to my normal streams where you ask me questions about your quad and I answer them, today it's going to be a tiny bit different, but in some ways better. Because today we're going to be talking with Brent Collier, Brent Collier, Collier, Brent Collier. <laughs> he is the founder, owner. He is BMC 3D. He is as much of an authority about 3D printing as anybody. And you may have heard on a previous video that I'm going to, I'm going to get my first 3D printer and I'm eventually going to start making content about 3D printing. Um, uh, but before I do that, I got to decide which one I want to buy. And it's super overwhelming. And I thought, well, if I'm super overwhelmed, some of you guys are probably super overwhelmed as well. Boom FPV, Boom FPV, I want to call out your question real quick in the chat. And by the way, for you guys, hey, check out my screen here. Check out my screen. If you go look on my Instagram, you can actually see 
all my screen set up. I've got a picture of it, the plugging this stream. Check that out. Boom, Boom FPV is asking in the chat about 3D resin printing. Everybody make sure that we don't forget because one of the questions I'm going to forget to ask is, hey, should we go with resin printing instead of filament? And what is resin printing and what is filament? We'll get, don't worry, we're going to get all that. Here's what I got going on. This is my screen over here in the upper right. These are the plebs. Say hello, pleb chat. Y'all are the guys in the regular old YouTube chat. You didn't pay any money to be here. And I love you just as much as everybody else. So don't feel bad. You guys are awesome. I will always respect the plebs. But we started. I started calling it the pleb chat because somebody in the chat said, Bard will never answer questions from us plebs. And I was like, I do too. But I like plebs. So y'all are the plebs. Down here, we got the super chats. If you want to get your question called out and make sure we get to it, because the regular chat goes by so fast. Hit that dollar sign down in the lower left. I don't know why I don't have the dollar sign. You can hit the dollar sign though. And you can get your super chat called out. And over here on the left is my Discord server. If you want to get in the Discord server, you got to be a patron. So join that patron down in the video description. Hello, Ghost Branch FPV. Hello, Chamber. All the usual cast of crew. I will be checking out your questions. But what I got to do now is I got to bring on, I got to welcome my guest... Here we go. Alex is running the board over there. Don't want me. My guest, Brent Collier. Hi, Brent. How you doing, man? Doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Good, good. I'm really glad you're here. And um, I'm really glad you're here for, for many reasons. One is, let me just make sure people know about your situation. This is Brent's website, BMC3D. Most of you guys probably already know it, but if you don't, bmc3d.co is a place to do order 3D prints. Brent, you design your own parts. You also do custom designs for other people. And I can see you got a bunch of printers there in the back. Yeah, that's correct. Um, yeah, uh, it's funny. These days, it's gotten to where I do a lot more custom design than just uh, printing and selling my you know normal uh, stuff just because I feel like the FPV uh, industry has gotten so fragmented, you know, years ago, it was like, there were two or three popular frames and you make, you know, designs and parts for those and you're golden. But now there's, you know, a thousand different frames out there, different sizes and all that. So everybody wants something different because they're all running different antenna setups and, you know, different cameras, whatever. So there's these days, yeah, tons of custom design work. So like, so how long have you been, when, when did you get your first 3d printer? How long ago? Just so people have a perspective on where you're coming from. Uh, let's see. I started I started getting into FPV in 2014, and it was real soon after that. So it was probably 2015, I guess, when I got the first printer. Um, I Well, for a while, I was designing parts and selling them through uh, Great3D. And I would, you know, just design stuff, send them files, and he would print and sell them. And I just kind of got... I was designing stuff so frequently that I got tired of waiting on him to print stuff and send it to me. So I was like, all right, I need to just get my own printer, you know, and I did. And then it was just like, it snowballed from there. So Yeah. I, and I see a lot of people in the chat who are suggesting a particular printer that you guys think that we should use. They're saying, just buy this and be done with. And we are, Brent and I are at the end of the stream in like the second half of the stream, we're going to pick some 3D printers, as many as we have time for and you guys have, have interest in. And we're going to, Brent's going to give his opinion on why he thinks this would be like good or bad. Uh, but before we do that, I want to kind of just get some background and some foundation. And because as I started looking at 3D printers, I was like, I don't even know what I'm looking at. So um, let me ask you this. Uh, let me ask you this, Brent. You talked about having the experience of ordering 3D prints from other people, and then eventually you got tired of waiting, and you were like, I should just get my own printer. And I think a lot of people start, they're like, should I get a printer? I could just order my own prints from somebody else. Should everybody who's in FPV have their own 3D printer? Is it just like, just shut up and get one? So here's the problem. It's kind of like when you first got into FPV, you know, you get really interested in it, and you get kind of obsessed with it, and you start, you know, looking at parts and buying new crap all the time and you know a new build here and there and you're working on it all the time and then and it just like consumes you right well <laughs> 3d printing does the same thing and nobody needs two hobbies like that you know because you get one and then you're tinkering with it you're printing upgrades for it and then you start looking at another printer and a different type and all this and it just kind of again it consumes you and like it's just sometimes for a lot of people it is easier to just have somebody else do it granted it might be cheaper to just buy a printer print it yourself but 
there's a, another big learning process in that too. It's like, you know, when you first have to learn how to tune your quad, like, yeah, it's not like just fly a quad and fly it, you know, it's, it's not that simple. So, well, that's, that's something, that's one of the reasons I have, people are surprised sometimes. They're like, Bardwell doesn't have a 3D printer. Cause like I'm a technical guy. And the big reason I've stayed away from it is because I, I, that was the sense that I had, like, I already have all my time taken up with quads and making videos about quads so all i need is another hobby but right. people are more and more people are telling me that today you can buy a printer and get decent prints like out of the box with like almost no work or maybe a little bit of work and how close are we to just being able to plunk your credit card down and get decent prints the hard thing for us as fpv people is that typically you're going to want to print tpu stuff if you're okay. in, interested in printing and are fine with PLA or something like that, yeah, you can easily buy a printer and have it just print amazing stuff out of the box. It, TPU is what complicates things because it's just more difficult to print. Um, it's more like it's trickier in terms of slicing your files and getting it to print right. It's trickier in terms of the hardware and how it actually handles the filament. Um, so that's definitely like where the complication comes. but it does seem like it's getting to where uh, a lot of the newer printers are better out of the box than they were um, just a few years ago. You know, um, it used to be most printers you bought, you had to do a handful of upgrades to it just to get them to print TPU at all, whether or not they did it well, you know, but now because of some changes in the hardware designs and whatnot, a lot of them are better out of the box. Yeah. And this may be something uh, I, this is something I'm excited about because like, so you talked about, we, we print with TPA. So TPA is a flex filament, right? What's, what's flex filament versus like something like PLA, which is like a, I guess a rigid filament. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, that's the whole thing that makes these parts be able to survive on quads with, with TPU. It's just, it's so durable. You know, you, if it's printed right and printed well, this stuff is like unbreakable you can, bash it with a hammer and it, it's fine, you know, whereas yeah. yeah, PLA and stuff like that, it's just, it'll just shatter, you know, TPU. I said TPA, the chat, I said TPA, I was thinking PLA. Yeah. So we need to print TPA and that flex filament. Um, the, the, my understanding is that there's a part called the extruder mm -hmm. and the extruder tell what's the extruder do and why is that harder for, for flex filament? So the extruder is, it's basically just a stepper motor with a gear on it that's, you know, pressed up against the filament and that's what's pushing it through the hot end. Right. But the problem is, well, with tip, typical filament, PLA, ABS, whatever, you know, it's pretty stiff. It's like, it's like uncooked spaghetti almost, you know, so it's very easy nice to push that, you know, through a hole or a straw or whatever. Right. But TPU is like cooked spaghetti. So you can imagine trying to push that through something, you know, right. if there's any, uh, unrestricted spot in that path, it will just like worm its way out of it and you're, it's not pushing through the hot end at all. And so that's the issue with a lot of uh, printers out of the box is that they, that, that path for the filament is not fully restricted. And so, you, you know, you start a print and then you come back later and you see it, it has this spiral of filament sticking out of it and it hasn't right. done anything, you know? So, right. And one of the things I've, I've been reading about is the difference between a direct drive extruder and a is it Bowden or Bowden drive extruder? Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, that, that's kind of goes along with what I was just saying. Cause with a, uh, a Bowden setup, yeah, it's a long, you have a long tube that you're pushing the filament through. And again, trying to push, you know, a flexible filament through it, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Well. It, it can be done. And if, you know, you have a good tubing where the tolerances are tight and there isn't much room for the filament to move inside of it, then, you know, it works pretty well, but you're still always, always better off with a direct drive. Than yeah, that, you. that brings us to one of the first real practical questions I wanted to ask you, because of course we could nerd out about, about background for a while, but number one, a lot of people in the chat already know some of this. I always like to make sure I'm not leaving the total beginners behind, but I also don't want to bore the experts. So let me ask you the first real practical question. Um, I've heard conflicting advice. If you're going to print flex filament, sh I know you can do it with a Bowden extruder, or Bowden, is it Bowden or Bowden? I don't know. I would say Bowden. I don't know. Bowden. I know you can do it, but would you say a direct drive extruder is really required, or is it just is it fine to go with a Bowden? 
but yeah, again, it can be done, but it's probably going to be a little trickier and give you more problems. You're just better off with a direct drive. Yeah. And, and is the difference there going to be price? Or can you get direct drive extruders and uh, now for a, the reasonable price? It's not. I mean, it's just a different um, setup on the printers. Like, I don't really think you know. Like, you always get one with the more expensive versus the other. They're like, mm -hmm. not really. It's just it just kind of varies from one printer to the next. Um, but a lot of them don't come with direct drive, mostly just because it reduces weight on the carriage that's moving the extruder around, and the more weight you have on that. You get artifacts in your print, like ringing and whatnot, you know, and so you can you can see that stuff. And so the more you can lighten up that uh, okay. extruder carriage, the better off you are, you know. So. so in some ways, in some ways, a Bowden extruder with a good quality, uh, a good quality setup could give you better results because there's less weight on that carrier. Yeah, it's really just you know, there's no one printer that's perfect for everything. You you know you have a good point. Anybody that that has that is really into 3D printing has a bunch of printers because there are some printers that are better for printing this thing and others that are printer better for printing this other thing, you know? And so, um, yeah, like I have uh, a couple of like bigger printers that I use for printing all my rigid stuff. And yeah, those have Bowden setups on them, but all my TPU printers are all direct drive, you know? So, Got you. Got you. so I think, one. I think as an FPV enthusiast, I would be leaning toward direct drive Yeah. because I would want to be able to print that flex filament. Definitely. So let's, so then the direct, the, the extruder drives the filament into the hot end mm -hmm. and the hot end basically gets real hot and melts the filament are there differences in quality of the hot end that we should be looking at um yes of course um and it's t so there are different types like some that have uh, a ptfe tube that runs through them and some that are all metal and again that kind of depends on what you plan to be printing you know like if it's tpu you don't need high temp but if you're printing nylon or other special material uh, special materials then you, you want to be able to handle high temperature and in those cases you might be better off with an all metal hot end you know gotcha um, so again it always just depends on what you want to do with it ghost branch fpv in the discords weighing in says i bought my first 3d printer an ender 3 pro about 20 days ago Really happy to have one now. Even though it's a Bowden extruder, I was expecting to have issues printing TPU. It worked like a charm out of the box. That's a good sign. And my yeah. main reason for buying a 3D printer was to design my own solutions to problems like vibration, isolation of GoPro models, and so forth. And I think that a lot of people, you get to a point where you want to design your own solutions. Very glad to hear that the Ender 3 Pro is printing TPU for you out of the box. This is one of the things I want to answer as we get into the second half of, of basically like at the end of the stream i'm basically going to decide which printer or maybe printers maybe i'll get more than one and like compare them i'm going to actually buy and there are so many to choose from um let's see uh, i also see you guys up in the chat up in the chat what's going on up in the chat teflon is ptfe's other name yes uh, so much of the chat is people saying, just buy this printer, which um, if you guys have actual questions you want me to ask Brent, by all means, chime in. When we get to the second half of the stream, we will definitely be taking suggestions to look at specific printers and giving pros and cons. If you have actual questions, definitely shoot them out. Um, so we've got the hot end in the extruder, and then the other part of, another part of it that I've become aware of is the bed, right? And the bed is... The bed is just the thing that the print is on. But yeah. apparently bed prep and the bed, the, the material of the bed, and it's like so important to getting, why is the bed so important to getting a good quality print? And what should we be looking at when we're thinking about the bed? So, yeah, there's a lot of different aspects, different types of beds. I mean, the, the biggest thing um, with printers like the Inner 3 and like these behind me, the, the beds move uh, back and forth, right? And, and uh, but everything else does the other movement, left, right, up and down the extruder. There are right. other printers where the, the bed doesn't move at all uh, laterally, but only goes up and down and the extruder moves in, in two dimensions, you know? And those are good because then like your print's not moving around. It's just the extruder that's moving. So if you're printing like tall stuff or things that might not, that might, um, 
flex more or wobble, whatever, stuff like that, then those are great because then the bed just slowly moves down. It's not going back and forth or getting like sometimes kind of shaking or vibrating. They're like, yeah, it like vibrates and all this stuff. So it's easy for things to pop off the bed and then your old prints room. And so that brings you into the, the bed surface. Uh, I have glass on all these printers. But then I have um, other ones uh, in my office that have um, uh, different bed material, like flexible, like spring steel uh, beds where, you know, you can, it's magnetic, you can pop it off the bed. And it's really easy to just flex it and pop the prints off, that sort of thing. Whereas like with these glass ones, like if you have a big print and it's stuck to it, you're like, oh, crap, like it can be hard to get it off sometimes. And you don't want to break the glass and, you know, right. all stuff. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Cement Kid in the chat before this question goes away. Cement Kid wants to know how hot does a glass bed have to be for TPU? So the beds heat up and that helps with adhesion. Yeah. And um, and different temp different materials require a different temperature bed. What do you use for TPU? So I only heat the bed for the first couple of layers, and then after that, I have the bed heaters turn off. And and it's still it's a low temperature too, um, uh, just 40, 40 degrees uh, Celsius, and and that's it. You know, yeah. some people will keep it heated the whole time. Some people don't heat it at all. You know, and again, that kind of depends on the um, bed material you have too whether or not you're using um, hairspray or glue stick or anything like that, or or just a clean glass bed. You know? Yeah, so you're saying you use glass bed for all your TPU prints, and you have spring steel on your machines for the other prints. Um, do you do any prep on the glass? You mentioned hairspray and glue stick. So yeah, for you, a you long just... time, I used hairspray, um, but that gets messy after a while because, you know, you're spraying it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's probably it's fine for the average hobbyist because you know you're not printing uh, every day, all day or whatever. But when you know you've got a bunch of printers and they're running all the time and you're constantly prepping them, then hairspray gets everywhere eventually. So um, I switched to using just a like regular purple Elmer's glue stick and uh, okay. smear some of that on the bed and and uh, clean it off with Windex between every print. Now, I, I've seen some printers advertised as having a special, like, textured glass bed um, where it, like, helps it adhere with no prep. And then when the print's done, it just pops right off. Do you have any experience or any thoughts about that? I have one of those on one, one of my the inner threes uh, inside. and But that printer has kind of been in pieces ever since I've had it. So I, I don't have a lot of experience with it. <laughs> yeah, I've done a few prints on it. That's it. I don't know. It was fine. Whatever. But the, the problem with stuff like that, though, is too, is if you ever have issues, like uh, if it's not level proper or something like that, and the, the nozzle can grind into the, that bed surface and it will like scar it up. Whereas with just regular glass, like it's not. Oh, it'll just you know. sort of skim along. Yeah. So let's talk about bed leveling. Um, it, it sort of makes sense that the. You've got the nozzle sort of skimming a fraction of a millimeter, perhaps above the bed, and if the nozzle is not, it has to know what the level of the bed is, basically. Yeah. Um, some printers have auto bed leveling. Some are manual bed leveling. Is auto bed leveling something that somebody should be looking for in their first printer, or is it's that a nice to have or a need to have? It's it's nice to have for sure. You definitely don't need it, but like yeah, if you have the because that that is a feature that typically comes on a more expensive printer, you know, mm -hmm. for sure. And so if, if it's still within your budget, then I'd say definitely go for it. Cause yeah, it, it's nice when you have it and it's working well. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. What do you think that typically adds? Like I've seen some printers that have sort of a bed leveling. You can have an add on. How much does that typically add in price? For, like those little like upgrade kits are usually like 50 or 60 bucks, I think hmm. for like a BL touch or whatever. How, how often do you typically have to re-level the bed? Because some people were saying, oh, we don't need a bed. I, I haven't re-leveled my bed since I got my printer. And other people are like, no, you should re-level before every print. I I mean, I don't unless I have to, right? So I generally, I watch the print when it starts and I can tell immediately uh, if I'm going to need to. And it just, and it may not be because the bed is out of level, but it may just be because of, uh differences in settings of that file that i'm printing versus the previous one you know um because this one i'm printing at uh 0.3 millimeters whereas the previous one was at 0.2 millimeters so uh, it changes a little bit you know right sort of thing. 
Some people are talking about the feature in the um, I'm 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 I hope I'm going to pronounce this name right. I apologize if I don't, but it's the Prusa, the Prusa mesh bed leveling. Now, does that mean that like if you've if you've got like a warped bed or something, it'll it'll just track along the surface or something? I think the mesh just refers to it. It it uh, measures like at a number of points along the bed, and it's like a mesh of points. So like I mm -hmm. my uh, Prusa set up, and it does uh, nine point so you know three in the front three in the middle three in the back or whatever and it like does its calculations or whatever so okay so we've got the bed we got now uh one other thing about the bed that's worth mentioning some so some of them have like magnetic beds that are removable those are yeah. the spring steel ones yeah and that you just sort of pop the sheet off and you can kind of pop the print off. That's nice. Are yeah, those more crazy. likely to get seems like if you've got the sheet steel that you're popping off all the time, it's more likely to kind of get messed up maybe but again since the whole thing's magnetic too it feels like even if that sheet gets a little bent up like when you put it on the bed it like it's it's solid on the thing because it's just one big magnetic sheet you know so i think even if you had some like warpage in the sheet the, the yeah. magnetism would suck it down to the bed i don't know though but gotcha all right so then we've got the extruder the hot end the bed Another component that we'll be thinking about, one of the things that people have mentioned is the power supply. Apparently, some cheap power supplies burn people's houses down. So we want a good quality power supply, I yeah. guess. <laughs> and and there's also some protection where like if if the hot end or the bed heater is messing up, it, it won't just go crazy. It'll shut itself down. Yeah. Thermal uh, runway protection or whatever. Yeah. Okay. And as far as the power supplies, actually what it usually is, is the connections for the bed heater um uh like on all these printers behind me i, I upgraded all of them and installed uh mosfets so the the power for the bed is not actually going through the control board which is they have notoriously like un, uh wimpy connectors and Got so you. You know, it starts pushing a bunch of amps through it and the things will melt and yeah sometimes catch fire so and since i have you know a dozen of these running in my house like i don't want to burn my house down <laughs> yeah 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 i mean those bed heaters i mean I, anytime you've got a heater running it's going to be drawing a lot of current mm -hmm. and you definitely want that going through so a um, uh, 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 power supply for the heater where the current is not going directly through the control board let's let's yeah, talk the about the thing too yeah is uh these are all these are all 12 volt um systems and then okay. um i think all the ones i have in my office are 24 volt which is nice because then with the 24 volt systems, they're not push, pushing as many amps to heat sure. the bed. So Twice the volts, half one, the amps. Yeah, they heat up faster. You have less concern about yeah, melting stuff, fire, et cetera. You know? So definitely, like, I would not buy another printer that had a 12 volt power supply. Okay, so the voltage of the power supply, good. I wouldn't have thought to think about that. The, the, another component that people have told me to th think about is the control board. So these control boards, I, they're, they're analogous to the flight controller on mm -hmm. a quadcopter. And like a flight controller, they have different firmwares they can run. Is that something I should be like, I'm, I'm almost tempted to go, do I really need to think about that I mean, along with all this other stuff? Is that something that should be driving my decision? So um, in t in t really like feature wise, Probably not really, especially on your first printer. But okay. one thing that does make a big difference is with the better controllers that have better um, stepper drivers, they're much quieter. Okay. Like, yeah, you can get the standard three, and then Creality sells a, they're like silent uh, control board. And that one that has the upgraded stepper drivers, and it's literally, it is silent compared to the stock one. It's a drastic difference. Yeah. Um, so, like, that's great, especially too, yeah, if, if like it's your only printer and it's like, you know, some people have them like in their bedroom or whatever, or right. in your office next to where you sit all every day or whatever, and you don't want to listen to it making a bunch of racket all the time. And yeah, it makes a huge difference. And and so one of the components that's going to be on the control board is the stepper motor drivers, and and some of those control boards are going to have higher quality drivers that'll give you smoother output and so forth. Um, is that right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, and you what get about other a printers too, where like. So on a lot of printers, you know, they have um, uh, a sensor at the end of the uh, like sort of the movement where it tells it, all right, you're at the end, you need to stop because it hits this little button, you know. 
but with those better stepper drivers, they can actually, um, I, don't, I don't know how they actually work, like they sense resistance or something, but you don't need that physical switch to stop it. You know, it, it can, the, the stepper driver can sense that it's, there's some resistance at the end and just stop it without any mechanical moving part, you know? Oh, so that's, that's slick. Like, one of the other, <laughs> one of the other features I've heard of is that it can resume. You want something that can maybe resume the print if it's interrupted. And that's something that's going to be related to the software that it's running. Yeah. If you, yeah, if you live somewhere where you have frequent power outages, which fortunately um, where I am here in California, like it's, it's pretty rare. Um, whereas like when I used to live um, uh, out your way and I was in North, North Carolina, mm -hmm. I feel like the power went out once a week, you know? And yeah. so that would have driven me nuts, but like here it never happened. So it's had not, hasn't been a real issue. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, Either, either you have that ability to resume the prints or you need to like have, uh, you know, UPS to run the printer on. So, right. you know, keep going. Right. Yeah. So let's see what, the, as far as the major components and features, um, what have we left out? What have we left out? Um, the, f the frame construction, a rigid yeah. frame made from like uh, tube steel or something or aluminum rather probably steel aluminum some of them are stamped and people say those those are uh, less desirable yes. what other major components have we overlooked hmm. yeah. so along the same lines with the frame like there are some that use a single or for the z-axis the ones that make it go up and down some of them just have a single stepper on mm -hmm. one side, you know, it's threaded rod that drives the whole thing up and the other one just kind of like follows along, but then others have dual steppers, you know, and so it, things tend to stay, stay more square, which obviously you want. Um, so that's something else to consider. Um, things like, uh, no acrylic frames says RK tech 88. Some yeah. of them have just cheap acrylic frames. That's not going to give you good results. I don't even really see, I, I don't even know if they still sell those much, but they were definitely around a lot for a while. I mean, you used to even see the, the laser cut wood ones too, you know? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so let's dive a little deeper now. I want to go, uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to share my screen with you uh, necessarily, but I'm going to, can I, yes, I can because, oh, but then I'll lose your camera. Um, so let me just let let me let you just pull these up uh so you can do your own poking around i want to start looking at some specific uh printers oh i'm gonna it's gonna be hard for me to also look at the chat while i do that i don't i need a fourth screen guys <laughs> the first one i want to look at is you know what actually let's let's wait on that one let's start with this is the ender three and this is when I think this must be the most popular 3D printer in use today because just ev it's just everywhere. And I am am I right that the Ender Ender 3 is is a design not a brand because there's like a Comgro Creality Ender 3 there's all these companies making them. Am I am I reading that correctly? Yeah, well, I mean it's a Chinese product so of course there's like tons of clones and you know like rebranded stuff and yeah. Right. So when I look for an Ender 3, what is this the Ender 3 design? What makes that stand out? Uh, here, I'm going to pick me, one. Like, I don't know. I just felt like it was a really solid, simple design. It's a very, like, extremely rigid frame, again, for how simple it is. Um, yeah, I was just uh, surprised. Like, it's, it's for what you pay for it, which is next to nothing. Like, it's yeah. a really solid choice. So I'm looking at this one. This one is a Comgro, it's an Amazon listing, Comgro Creality Ender 3 uh, with resume print. Oh, one of the things we didn't mention was the bed size. That's a factor. This one is a 220 by 220 by 250 uh, print size, print volume. Um, some of the other printers uh, that we'll look at have smaller bed volumes. How much should I care about bed volume? I mean, my first thought is, well, I'm 3D, I'm going to be printing GoPro mounts and stuff. Do I need a big bed? No, for F, most FPV stuff, like you can, there's generally like kind of three sort of sizes really in, in the, the, the entry level printer world. Like you have the, your like uh, minis that have a really small bed and then the, the inner three, you know, around uh, 200 millimeters of square is like kind of like the average, like middle size. And then you have your bigger ones, you know, mm -hmm. but really like even the small ones are fine for 95% of the FPV related 
uh, parts that you'll print, you know. So I shouldn't worry too much about bed volume. And when I when I get to the point where I want a bigger bed, I'll just buy my second 3D printer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, by the way, um, Mika and Sanderpa FPV are pointing out that Ender 3 is not a design. Ender 3 is just a product name. Creality is the designer, I guess, and it's an open source design. Okay, got that. Thank you for the correction there. Um, so what I really like to do is is I'd like to get your sort of expert opinion. Let me see if I can share my screen with you. Hang on. Let's do this. Oh, I know what to do. Oh, this is going to work great. Share screen one. No, because then you'll just be looking at, never mind. I'm going to share my screen with you. And then I need to, oh, I've broken it. There we I've go. broken it all. Hang on. <laughs> Come back. What have I done? No. No. Where's my, oh, I'm... stop sharing. <laughs> okay, now you're back. That's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to just give you an Amazon link. Let me just um in uh over in uh chat, Brent. I'm gonna throw you an Amazon link because I would like to just kind of, when I look like when I look at a quadcopter, I'm like, oh, I like this, I like this, I hate that, I hate that. I would really like to just get your top of the head thoughts about the price versus performance and what features these products have and what they're leaving out. I think that's going to be, a, and we're going to go through some of these. I think that'll be really valuable for the chat. So the first one we're going to look at is this Congro Creality Ender 3. So what for a price of $229, what stands out to you about this pros and cons would, would make somebody want to buy this one versus pick another one? Um, I mean, the, the price alone is nice. Like you, and it's pretty full featured. I feel like for that price, um, uh, as far as for somebody who doesn't already know about them or has, doesn't have any experience, um, it's hard to say because that, that's not me. <laughs> right. Um, you got to kind of get into that mindset. Yeah. But, you know, it, one of the things that's really nice about it is uh, that there's tons of aftermarket support, all these upgrades and things available for it because so many people have it. And, like, okay. that goes a long way, you know, whereas if you buy this sort of, like, off-brand printer that's that's different, it's not, yeah, some open source design, it's something different, there's not going to be anything out there, you know, supporting mods or people who have run into this problem that you're having and already know the solution like you're, you're not going to encounter any of that that's not what you want you want uh, the, the the printer that lots of other people are using so right there's yeah, that, tons of important knowledge out there around it you know so it seems to me my impression is that the ender if you buy an ender 3 number one you're right there's going to be tons it's like if you buy uh, a tyrannus radio there's just tons of tutorials tons of accessories tons yeah. of support you are going to probably have to do some work on it to get it printing well out of the box. It may not be, although again, Ghost Branch said he got an Ender and it printed great out of the box. Yeah. Um, you may have some upgrades, but it's gonna get you in at a low price. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, Strike Striker 8 Paints says, take it from somebody who got a printer a few years ago, get at least a 200 by 200 bed with a 200 degree, 200 uh, plus Z axis. You will want to print other stuff, and the 200 bed size fits most things. Okay, Striker 8 Paints thinks we need at least a 200 millimeter bed. So let's see, get a printer with a screen on the side so you can easily enclose it. ABS needed an enclosure pretty much. Yep, we've talked to Russell Baker about Bowden tube versus direct drive. That is true. Everybody is, so let's let's go to another one. This one is the Anycubic Mega S. Now, somebody suggested this one to me. Let me put it up on screen for the chat. Somebody suggested this one to me in my YouTube video. It is around $300. So it's going to be more expensive. I'll, I'll throw you the link to that as well, Brent. Hold on. I got it. You got it. This is going to be more expensive. That uh, the Ender was two uh, two twenty nine, but this one is it is not direct drive. Um, this is the one that has the fancy bed. I think is one of the things it brings to the table. The special yeah, bed tech. Glass. Yeah. So between let's say as you look at this one and you think about. This one for two ninety nine versus the Ender three that we looked at for two twenty nine. Tech, I can just put them both on screen. What amazing technology we have! Which one of these stands out to you? Is it worth the seventy dollar upgrade? No, that's the Soval. Here's the Ender. 
and her for 229 Is it worth the extra uh, 70 bucks to go with this Mega S? Setting aside the fact that the Ender 3 has all the, the you know, it's just popular and has all that stuff. This one also it has a, uh, just a bigger footprint, like I can tell. I mean, just because of the frame design, the way it's got the spool off the side like that, like it's just going to take up more space on your desk, which is another nice thing about the Ender. It's so small, but still has the same bed size. And again, this is a, you know, stamped steel frame, it looks like. Um, okay. Whereas the Ender is, that's what's the Ender made from? The, the ender, it's like a extruded aluminum. Um, I see. Yeah. Good point. I would have missed that. Very interesting. A lot of times I find with these um, printers that have the touchscreen interfaces that they're uh, somewhat limited. I like they, they don't end up uh, exposing all the functionality when they add the touchscreen interface um, mm. as opposed to just the kind of standard uh, uh, button slash knob interface. So. Now this one, the uh, other thing it seems to offer, it's got the ultra base, the patented ultra base. Okay, um, so presume so they advertise that you don't need bed prep and it easily pops off. It's also got a filament sensor and it's giving the build volume in inches, which is right, annoying. Great. Why would you do that? But maybe it's got a bigger build volume. It sounds like you're still sort of leaning toward the Ender Three, especially because of the. Uh, I mean, you can always put a different bed on it, and especially because of the stronger frame. Um, does the any cubic have the dual Z axis, uh, drivers that keeps the sort of from sagging when you're printing? I can't tell about that. I think it does. Looks like it. I think it's got the dual Z axis. Yeah, I think it does. Then the Ender, does the Ender have dual Z axis as well? Uh, no, I think you have to have, maybe the pro does. I don't remember. Okay. So let me, I have to close these windows now and get back and see what the chat is saying. I don't want to leave them forever. Um, filament sensor, not so important, says license to drive. I turned mine off. Yeah, and I've heard they're finicky too. Like I don't have any printers with them, but I, you know, heard plenty of stories from people where they, like, they don't always work that well and can sometimes, you know, stop your print because it thinks the filaments run out, but it hasn't. It's still there, you know? Yeah. Zero FPV points out in the chat, you can buy and use Ultra Base with any printer with a heated bed. So we could just get the Ultra Base after the mark. It's nice that the AnyCubic includes it. Ultra Base is not exclusive, though. Um, Chamber, point, Chamber and Ghost Branch are re reminding us that the Ender doesn't have dual Z axis out of the box. Uh, not even the Pro version, says Ghost Branch. Um, he says the Any Ghost Branch says he heard that the AnyCubic Mega S is an overall better printer compared to the Ender, but it's way harder printing TPU on it, which is kind of the point. Ghost Branch, why why is it harder printing TPU on it that you've heard? Okay, um, let's see. We're gonna get to. Let me get another one out of the way. The another one of my personal questions out of the way, and then we're gonna start taking suggestions from the chat, and we will get to the Prusa Mark III and the new Prusa Mini, Prusa Mini which are some very tempting looking uh, printers. And we'll try to answer the question of, should you just buy a printer, just spend all your money on a printer that does it all out of the box? So the next one I wanna look at is this one. This is the Soval SV01. The Soval SV01. This one looked very, this one looked very appealing to me. It's also $299, the same price as the AnyCubic. Um, it does look like it has the extruded aluminum body yeah it's direct that's drive. nice it is direct drive right out of the box which for tpu seems like a good thing um it's got, the big, it. got a bigger bed too this is interesting because it kind of looks like it's somewhere in between an ender 3 and a cr10 um you know it's the same ender 3 uh frame style but uh the slightly larger bed Let's see here. I can't tell if it has dual Z axis. It looks similar to the Ender yeah. in that. So I would guess that it doesn't have dual Z axis unless it says different in the product link, but I don't think it does. So it, this this feels a little bit like an Ender. Oh, uh, you can see in the, the side profile shot, the one that shows the bed size, you can see the stepper motors on both sides. Oh, really? That's exciting. I'm going to take your word for that because I'm not sure I'm, I'm going to be able to point out what the stepper motor is versus anything else. But um, so that's cool. Dual Z axis keeps the keeps the arm from basically sagging a little bit, uh, just makes the prints more precise. So this one, this one looks, I mean, to me, this one looks pretty appealing. Is it? 
I mean, there, yep. it seems like there are some upgrades that you could already, it might cost you 50 bucks or something to put a direct drive extruder on your Ender already. Well, this one's going to come with it pre-installed. Yeah. And yeah, a bigger bed. Pretty decent setup. Okay, so let's compare. Now, the chat is asking about the CR10, and I'm just going to stay on Amazon because what the heck, right? So people are asking about the CR10, and you mentioned that. So I'm just going to pull up. Now, I see a Creality CR10 for $399. This one seems like it's – here's a Creality CR10 Mini for 305 Is that – so the CR10, about 400 bucks seem like the price point that, that people are asking about? Something like that, yeah. So let's pull that one up, and let me also – Let's look at that. What do we got with the CR10? What's that bring into the table for its extra hundred bucks? Uh, mostly, it's just a lot bigger. Oh, so compared to an Ender Three, a CR10. Let's see what the. I'll bet you that the chat is going to disagree with you about that. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> chat, what's the CR10 bring to the table that the Ender does not? The chat loves the CR10. CR10 is direct drive. No. I'm, I may be I may be misreading some of the chat. It's all it's all delayed. So, is it direct drive? It doesn't look like it. Or it's direct drive to me. No, you can see the tube going into it. CR10 yeah. has no bootloader, so updating software is difficult. Can we talk about the bootloader, Brent? That's something people have mentioned. Yeah, um, it's not a big deal. Like you get you know the little kit, so you can burn one on it. You just use an Arduino and plug a few jumper wires up and put a bootloader on it. Like it's not hard. Whereas if you have a bootloader, you just update firmware via like USB. USB, yeah. Oh, I want that. Yeah, I want that. But I mean, that's one of the things like you got to do it once, and then you're fine. It's not like you have to do it every time or anything like that. Not like Betaflight, where every every four months you upgrade. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah. So people are saying the CR10 has a bigger build volume, but it sounds like the build volume is not really going to be a driving factor for a typical FPV hobbyist. No. It's, yeah. Um, so let's get to the let's get to the big guy in the room, and that's the Prusa. Let's talk about the Prusa Mark III, and a lot of people are going to shy away from this because of the price. So a Prusa Mark III is about it's seven hundred and fifty dollars for a kit that you put together yourself, and that takes hours. Yes. Or a thousand dollars USD to get a pre-assembled kit that they ship to you. But you typically have to wait a while too. There's always a wait for the assembled ones. So why is Prusa, why would somebody spend a thousand dollars on a Prusa if they could spend 200 or $300 on what looks like a pretty decent one? Uh, what is Prusa bringing to the table? Um, man, I don't know. Cause there's not anything like drastically different about it. Like, yeah, it, it, uh, you get the auto bed leveling, which is nice. It's got the spring steel bed, which is nice. Um, it has the, it comes with the um, upgraded stepper drivers. Like again, there's no stop switches or anything. It's all just uh, wh whatever kind of magic it works. I don't know, but it's nice. Um, it's quiet out of the box. It even like you can even switch it into stealth mode while it's running, and then like just goes silent. It slows down a little bit, but it like makes no noise on it. And Cus customer support says Mike Niederhauser, you can actually reach them. That is yeah, nice. totally. It, yeah, it's not some you know faceless company that you will never respond to anything or whatever. You know, it's totally like they're like legit. Um, and it just it works really well, and it's consistent. I mean, that's the one where I can just fire it up and walk away. Like I know it's gonna come out fine you know um so that's nice they're they're, they're really it's a, like high quality product for sure so it's a high quality product uh, one of the questions that i i'm trying to see if we can answer is whether it's feasible to expect to sort of buy a printer and with minimal work get good prints out of it or whether everybody who gets into 3d printing should expect to just spend hours and hours tweaking and tweaking and so forth and some people you get all kinds of conflicting answers most people seem to say that the Prusa is the one that is going to be the most likely to give you an out of the box, just click and go experience. I mean, most of the last few printers that I have purchased were like printed great out of the box. Like, yeah. it's it's rarely the printer that's the issue, um, at, at least when they're brand new. You know, after you've been running them for a while, the things tend to get gunked up your nozzle will get partially clogged or whatever this and that you know but as far as out of the box like i mean the the ender print's great my uh, cr10 was great yeah the the prusa obviously was great you know 
And then even uh, these uh, maker selects, like again, they've all been great out of the box too. It, it's when people are trying to print something and they're maybe the slicer they're using or they're, you know, they're having to add supports and they're not in the right place or configured the right way. Like that's where you, where I think more of the problems are. When you see these prints, you know, that people post on Facebook or whatever, you're like, that print looks like crap. Like it's just a stringy mess of garbage. You know, that's not the printer. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, the slicer and how that stuff's configured and, and their, their settings, you know, it's, it's like saying, um, beta flight's garbage when some people obviously fly amazingly with it and other people that have it right. set up well and so it flies like crap, you know? So we definitely have to talk about, uh, I definitely have to talk about software side, but I want to hold off on that because I definitely want, the chat is asking about some printers and I want to make sure they get their payoff. I don't want to just ignore them the whole chat. The next one, the next one that somebody's throwing out is the TiVo Tarantula Pro and I've just Googled it and gone, do you know that one off the top of your head? I've, yeah, I've seen them around. I don't okay, know. let's. Th I'm gonna throw that up on the ch on the stream, and I mean, it looks fancy. That's for sure. What uh, what stands out to you about this printer? Um, uh, it comes in at a price. It's listed at two twenty nine, so it's the same price as the the Creality Ender three. What stands out to you? Of pros and cons about this printer? That would make you choose it or stay away from it. Well, it definitely looks pretty snazzy. <laughs> yeah. It's over that 220 millimeter build volume. And by the way, guys in the chat, I apologize, but while I've got this screen up, I can't see you in the chat. So uh, I don't know what to do about that. But uh, I only have so many windows. So um, here, I can let me put this on top of Brent's face and then go over to his window. Oh, that'll work. That'll work. Okay. Okay. Now I can see the chat too. Um, yeah, it looks snazzy. What else do we see? See, it's got uh, full metal E3D. Uh, an extruder that's nice um i mean it's still a bowden setup which sucks for tpu but i mean it says that it works with flexible filaments but they know, all say that they all I've, say that I've, though i i've i i at first i was like oh good it works with flexible filaments yeah. uh -huh. and now i just think they all say that <laughs> yeah it works with flexible filaments if you don't give a crap about how it turns out. <laughs> or if you're willing to spend 27 hours on a print. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yes. Okay, so no. So let's just assume that it would not be ideal for flexible filaments, although the chat will now fill up with people saying, don't worry, I do it, it's fine. Um, let's see. A control board is an MKS Gen LV10. Is that is that good? Yeah. <laughs> okay, great, great. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, um, right so here. would you take would you take this one at a price of two twenty nine over an Ender three? Uh, I mean they'll probably both print fine to be honest. Like they they look like they're pretty comparable. Yeah, um, it it looks like a similar a little bit of a similar design. Yeah, maybe even some of the parts would be compatible. Okay. Okay, similar. I would, personally, I think at the same price, I would. This one doesn't really have anything that jumps out about it to me. Yeah. Uh, that the advantage of the Ender uh, community probably would would put it over the top. For yeah. Me. I mean, really, in general, there's just a ton of good options nowadays. You know, yeah. um, for a while there was a lot of just like, in terms of uh, budget stuff, there was just crap out there. Yeah, all the acrylic stuff and everything, and just cheap parts and just it's just gotten a lot better you know yeah i mean it's just like the fpv stuff how you know the things they need to get better and cheaper you know so it's nice chris 1974 in the chat says capricorn tubing should help printing tpu in a boat and set up what is capricorn tubing I heard that's is that that like special uh blue stuff that i see around i don't know i mean mm -hmm. i don't do any tpu printing on boat and set up so yeah now, what is, what's the printer that you've got behind you? What is the your sort of workhorse behind you? Let's look that so one up. These are all um, Monoprice Makers Select uh, V2s. Um, and I just kind of had a bunch of those because that's what I started with. And um, which is funny because, like, I mean, these were 250 or so new, and which is yeah. know, more than all the ones that we're talking about just about. And they're probably less uh, feature packed, you know. Um, the it definitely looks like it has a very small bed. 
they're all too like 200 square you know oh that's not um, that's not as small as it looks it must yeah be. but they're all the you know stamped steel frames which sucks so like i have put z braces on most of them so they don't you know wobble and flex and whatnot um i uh, added the glass bed to all of them like i've upgraded the the um the plate that's under the bed to a stiffer thicker aluminum one replaced all the bearings Okay, so based on what you're saying, as a beginner looking for a good out of the box first time experience, I would steer away from this one. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't buy this one. But then again, I'm, I'm also <laughs> modifying them to be consistently reliable and run, uh, you know, minimum twelve hours a day. Yeah, that's day. true. You run them all the time. For you it's, know, somebody that's printing their occasional uh, GoPro mount on their own, like it's fine, you know. Yeah. But, but at a I'm price of at a price of two fifty nine, I'm seeing it at two fifty nine from Mono Price. Mm -hmm. It seems like there's a lot of other stuff out there that might give a better experience out of the box, especially at that yeah. price. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Um, every, we gotta we gotta mention the new printer from Prusa. Yes, the mini. It's the mini. It's the mini. The Prusa mini, and I showed you guys the Mark III, which has a huge print volume. But the Mini is basically a Prusa printer with a smaller print volume, and it costs about, is it $350? Where's yeah. the price? It's about $350. Now, I've noticed that as we've done this research that a lot of the printers are coming in between around two and $300. It seems like there's a, just a ton of them in that price range. This one's a little more expensive at $350. You spend maybe as much as $100 bucks more, a little more. But... It seems really appealing. The promise is that you're getting all the good things about a Prusa printer, great out of the box quality, lots of features, and all you're giving up is the print volume. Do you buy that? Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I definitely plan to pick one up. I, the only thing that I'm not excited about with it is the modem setup. But right, like, they're all, all of their products work well enough that like, um, if that's the only downside it has, then I'm okay with that. You know. I still want to give it a try. I love like if it's a tiny little printer, tiny footprint, like which makes it great for if you want to have you know a dozen of them on a rack. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. that's awesome. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that to come out and give it a try. I, I watched um, a video on it where uh, uh, Joseph was talking about all the features, and I should have looked at it again ahead of this, but I remember there were a couple that I was surprised about and wasn't even expecting, and I was like, oh man, that looks awesome. I really. Let's try that. <laughs> St Stephen Rossi says, please shy away from Bowden, Josh. You said you don't want to be consumed with tweaking, and you will if you do TPU on Bowden. It's a but it's a Prusa. Shouldn't it? I noticed that the um I noticed that the 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 Z axis is not supported. Is that going to be? It seems like that'd be kind of wobbling around, but but surely they've dealt with that. Yeah, and it's uh it seems like it's a super sturdy design that they have, and it helps because it's such a, a small bed. The, right. you know, that little arm is really short, so it'd be different if it were, you know, uh, twice as long or something. So we'll see. Ghost Ghost Branch is telling us that Capricorn tubing has to do with temperature. Capricorn tubes withstand higher temperatures than standard PTFE tubes, or so if you print PETG or ABS, that's an upgrade to get. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Good. Good. Sounds like I it don't. I have to replace my tubing, um, kind of on the regular anyway, so it's hasn't really been an issue. I print a lot of uh, PTG. That's kind of like my go-to as opposed to ABS or whatever for, for you know, strong, rigid parts. And uh, yeah, I mean, I print that at 245, which is on the, on the hotter end. Um, and so yeah, that, that tubing can burn up, but I just, as a maintenance item, I replace it pretty regularly. I've seen some printers that have uh, enclosures around them, but none of yours do. What's no. the deal with that? You don't need it with TPU. Um, number one, like you're not getting a lot of smell from it. it. It's not as sensitive to temperature changes like the ABS and whatnot. ABS will just warp and split and if there's a small little, you know, breeze or uh, whatever in the room. So you need the enclosure and, and plus ABS just stinks when you're printing it. Um, oh, it interesting. Too. So, but uh, yeah, it's just not really necessary for TPU printing. Oh my God! This is the question of the day. I wish I could set up a poll. I'd see. I th that's one of the things that makes these decisions so hard is um, because th there's always going to be you. Can, it sounds like the takeaway is that you can make almost anything work. You can print flex filament on a Bowden setup. You can have a cheap stamped steel frame, or you can get good results. But how much work are you going to put into it? And I don't know if there's any way to really quantify 
how much work are you going to put into it to make it freaking work? Yeah, and it kind of comes down to what you want your experience to be. Do you do you want to just yeah, take it out of the box, have it work great, and never have to touch it? You know, or like a lot of us, are you the person that likes to tinker with this stuff? You know, and likes to to mod it and everything. Then you know, get whatever you want. You know, if you want to well, keep as possible and then do upgrades and stuff, that's fine too. You know, I'm torn because having a printer that I have to upgrade will make good content for the channel, right. but at the same time. Like if I were to just say, okay, I'm going to spend $1,000 on a Prusa Mark III, it, I just put it on the table, start printing, and be like, this is easy. Well, I'll get good prints, but I won't get good content. I'm, I'm not <laughs> sure just how much I, – I, I'm trying to – I guess what I'm trying to do is find the sweet spot where you're not spending $1,000 to have at your hand held. Yeah. But at the same time, if I could spend $200 on a printer I'm going to have to mod the crap out of and two hundred and fifty dollars on a printer that'll save me ten hours of work. I'll totally do it. Yeah. So, I guess the question is, where's the sweet spot? What should we be looking? Is is it like is the Ender Three the sweet spot? The two hundred twenty nine dollars. Is there an, like a a half upgrade to the Ender Three for two hundred and fifty dollars? That where somebody will do that work for me? Yeah. Well, it seems like maybe going with the Ender Three Pro or something where you get, you know, a couple of extra features, the nicer controller or whatever, then maybe that's the that. sweet spot, you know? So here's an Ender Three Pro. Um Creality Ender Three Pro, two hundred fifty eight dollars. That's a that's a little higher price point, but what are we getting in the pro that we're not getting in the uh in the regular Ender Three for two twenty? What's the upgrades in the pro? Let's see. We got a magnetic bed, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm seeing. Can, do you know the answer? I'm looking here. Let's see. Ender 3 Pro has an upgraded power supply. It won't burn your house down. That's good. Yeah, that's always good. <laughs> that's what uh, the chat is telling me. Lots of people saying just get a Prusa. The problem with the Prusa is as a YouTuber, I would just have, I wouldn't make, it would just work. And I yeah. wouldn't get to uh, have have good. And and the other thing is that I don't want to, like if I can say, oh, it's a business expense. I'm just going to spend money on a Prusa. Well, that doesn't help you guys. You guys out there on a, on a tighter budget, I'm just like ignoring you and saying, ah, if you can't spend money, you can't get into it. I'd much rather not do that. It's um, funny though. I've never printed TPU on my Prusa. <laughs> no no i just always I print pla ptg other stuff on it i just do the tpu on all these printers yeah let's see people like the cr10 because there's a good mosfet cr10 is much better cr10 s has a better board and better firmware there's the people are liking the cr10 s over the uh over the ender Let's see. Yeah, yeah but the CR10, the CR10, I mean, you're in a totally different price point then is the problem. Yeah. Now you're in the 400 plus price point. And I think for my my first one, I think it seems like the, the place to be for the price is between two and 300. To me, that feels like a price that anybody who's into FPV could swing 300 bucks for a printer instead of 300 bucks for your next quad. And by the yeah. time you're in the $450, $500 price point, I feel like that's much less accessible. So here's what I'm going to arbitrarily draw the line at 300 bucks for my first printer. Although, man, the Prusa, Prusa Mini sure is tempting and probably is worth it for 350 bucks. It's probably worth it to, to most people. But I'm going to draw the line at 300 bucks. So then the question becomes, what printer under 300 bucks? Ender three does that mean that we're just it's gonna be the Ender three Pro? Is that the one to get for under three hundred bucks? I mean it's like I have one right here that I just got. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there it is in the box. You just bought one too. <laughs> you can get the CR ten in the three hundred dollar range. I'm not seeing that drone shots. Chris E points out any content you make is model specific, so really not of interest to anyone that doesn't own one. Uh, that further is a vote for the Ender. Ender 3 Pro hand. The chat is saying Ender 3 Pro. Are you willing to do a direct drive upgrade on an Ender 3? Stephen Rossi asks. Um, so I think we are going to assume that direct drive is like 
not mandatory, but you definitely want to have direct drive if you're doing TPU. Brent, if I get an Ender 3 Pro for 250-ish bucks, how much more am I going to be in putting a direct drive extruder on it? Uh, you can get those kits for like 35 bucks, I think. It's pretty oh, cheap. So that's not, I, that's not bad. I, I just ordered this Ender 3, and at the same time I ordered um, the, the Creality's, like their fancy glass bed. I ordered the direct drive uh, upgrade and uh, like two other things. What? Oh, I got a, a Raspberry Pi to run Octoprint to run it and something else. Oh, like you need to get the stiffer bed springs on it because um, the, the stock springs are like super wimpy. So if you have to raise the bed a little high, then it just, it, there, there's not enough tension. Um, that's cheap, a couple dollars for some springs. Um, Steve yeah. M wants to know what extruder you're using on your Select V2s. Uh, I, have, I have Plexion extruders on all of these. Um, I, as soon as I get the printers, like the stock extruder comes off, and I basically replace everything on on the um, on that carriage. I replace the extruder. Uh, I have my own like fan shroud design that I use with a blower fan instead of the stock um, 40 millimeter fan. Um, yeah. The, that, that's that's one thing that kept me with these printers for a long time is that the compatibility with the Flexion extruder. Um, I have another Ender 3 in my office that I got a Flexion and put on it, but that one has to use the E3D hot end, which I just don't like as much um, for TPU anyway, because um, it's there, there's a, it's longer, so there's like more space between the actual heater block and the uh, extruder gear, so that's just like, I don't know, that's always, I've always found that to be bad on, on all the printers that I've used over the years. The, the longer that distance is, like, the more trouble you're going to have. So we got a couple good questions coming in. I, we, I, we, I feel like we're homing in on which printer I'm going to get. By We started with a cap of 300 bucks. I just arbitrarily decided. Got a couple really good questions that I don't want to miss. Um, Chris1974 says, Brent, what are mandatory upgrades on any printer? What are like five things that you just have to have? Assume, let's assume we're printing TPU, flex um, filament. I definitely like having the glass bed for sure. Um, yeah, if, if it's not a direct drive, then I think that's important to have to switch to. Um, Previously, I always said these Flexion extruders, but again, a lot with a lot of the recent printers, it seems like they can much better handle TPU than um, the average printer could, you know, just a couple of years ago. So uh, that's not as much of a requirement now. Um, for me, this isn't even for TPU, but just printing in general. I can't stand printing from an SD card. Like having to put the file on SD card, stick the SD card in a little slot, and then screw around with the, you know, the knob on the printer or whatever, like, I have Octoprint uh, running on all these printers. And so I'm just, you know, on the computer, open up tab in the browser, drop a file, click start, and it does it. You know, like that makes the whole experience immensely better. Having that control over it while it's running, you can, you know, tweak the extrusion, tweak the speed, uh, temperature, all that stuff easily while it's running. Um, it's just that makes the whole experience a whole lot better. That is definitely a must have for me. Um, do you think that would also be a, um, that feels to me like that's a must have for somebody doing your level of skill and volume, but maybe not for somebody just starting out or do you disagree with that? Um, that's tough. Like, cause yeah, I like, just doing it via the SD card is fine. Like it certainly it gets the job done, but, um, you know, doing it this way through Octoprint definitely makes it easier and just like. Uh, you just have more options with what you're doing. You can, when you see stuff going wrong, it's easier to, like I said, tweak stuff and recover the print from going bad, you know? Um, Got you. You can see that a print is about to go bad and maybe save it halfway through with a little tweak to yeah. the settings. Yeah. As opposed to just losing the print and having to start over. And being able to um, monitor it, you know, uh, remotely is nice too. Or like, you know, I have them set up, they'll, it sends me a text when the print finishes, you know, that stuff's nice because they're in the garage here. And if I'm elsewhere, like I can still get notified and like, that's nice. Um, a lot of people have them set up with webcams too. So you can yeah. see the print or, you know, they record time lapses and stuff, that sort of thing. So, so, okay, cool. So the other question I want to make sure we don't miss is what about resin? 
So let's talk about resin printers. The ones we've been talking about are filament printers. You have a spool of filament that it melts and lays down layer by layer. How does a resin printer work? So there, there are a couple of different types or styles. Um, I've never used any, but I've certainly, you know, read and watched a lot of content on them. Um, but yeah, like you have a pool of resin and there's a, a screen or, well, some of them use a screen that's in, in the bottom of it and you have this plate that lowers down into it and the, you know, the resin reacts to UV light. And so it, you know, shines a light on it and then the, the bed moves up, you know, a tiny bit mm -hmm. and it does again, it keeps doing that. But the problem with the resin printers is number one, like they really stink. Um, that resin is very smelly. And then there's a whole, there's a lot of post-processing with those. You have to, you know, if you take it out, you have to uh, rinse it off and then it has to cure. You, you know, you either have to have a curing <laughs> state with UV lights or you got to set it outside the sun or, you know, whatever, like you so, don't just pop it off the printer and it's done, you know? Super Deluxe says, what the, what the F do you need resin for, Joshua? I don't, I don't know. But my point is somebody said to me, hey, you should just go resin. You can get a resin printer for 450 bucks. It's not that more than, much more than a filament printer. Then you don't have to deal with extruders and all this nonsense and the level of – and they even have flex resins now. And I was like, what? So I was like, hey, should we just – you know, if you got 450 bucks, should you just get a resin printer and just skip all this nonsense? Hey, if somebody wants to send you one, yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. How, have you got – I guess you don't use resin printers, but the, I was kind of sketchy on the flex resin. It was like seems like it's something new. I'll bet it's not as good as TPU. And Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't, know. I don't have any firsthand experience with it, so I'm not sure. But the the level of detail that you can do with those is insane though. I mean – you know, you'll see these like tiny little prints that are just full yeah. of details and it's just nuts. So that I can totally appreciate, but otherwise they kind of sound like a headache. Sounds like it's a no. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nathan Knudsen says I should look at the CR10 Mini at just under 300 bucks. Let's look at the CR10 Mini just under 300 bucks. Let's see what we got here. CR10 Mini. Now let's see if I can... Let's see if I can start to get smarter about what I should be thinking about these printers. So I see that this is an a, a, an Ender style frame. It looks just like the Ender in, in that respect. It has the extruded aluminum tubes, uh, the frame, so it's going to be a stiffer frame. It looks, I see that we've got this tube, which that's the Bowden drive. So it is not a direct drive, although it does look like it looks like the driver is right here on the left, so it does look like it's a relatively short tube for the drive. For so maybe you could get away with it, or maybe you'd have to do a mod. It's got a glass bed. That's good. These are the leveling knobs, so it looks like it's manual leveling. Maybe it's auto leveling. I'm not sure. And I'm gonna see if it has the dual Z axis. I can't tell. What I want to look at for the dual Z axis is if there's a stepper motor on this far side. And I see a belt here. I'm guessing that means it does. Oh, no, that's the belt for the carrier to go back and forth. Let's see if we can figure out. That's the main driver, the main stepper motor. Double gear extrusion mechanism. I can't tell if it's dual Z-axis. I would probably just have to. Is this the, is this the right not. side? Yeah, I have to look at just. Why do you say probably not? Um, just because, like, the regular CR10 is not, so the, yeah. just a okay. smaller version of that, then I would guess it would be the same. So the bed size for this is in inches, so FU, but the total printing <laughs> size is 11.8 by 8.6 by 11.8, and I think the, tw the 220 is about 8 inches. Um, 220 millimeter 2 inches is uh, 8.6 inches. So it is bigger than 220 by 220 by 220, which is what we said we wanted. And the price on this is $305. So chat, here's the question for you guys who are saying the CR10 is amazing, CR10 is amazing. And I'm going to pause the – we're going to wait for the chat to catch up and give you the answers to this one. Why is this one superior to like the Ender 3? Because it certainly looks very similar to the Ender 3 in most ways that I can tell. So what's good about it, the CR10 Mini? What's good about this that makes it worth 80 bucks more? Okay, Nathan Newton says it's on Banggood for 275. All right, so say it's 50 or Yeah, but then you got to wait a month for it. Yeah, no, I wouldn't I'm not going to do that. 
Stephen Rossi says, I can't wait for Josh's frustration getting his bed height correct on the first layer lines with a manual bed level. How hard could it be, Stephen? It's not hard. Uh, CR10 Mini is six bucks over budget. I would give it if you can convince me it's better. Bigger bed. Tritone FPV says bigger bed, but if it's at least, I think we're going to say that if it's at least 220 by 220 by 220, we're going to say that's good enough. Mm-hmm. Okay, Brent, let me get your face back up so people can see you beautiful beard <laughs> CR10 Mini is a Bond Tech BMG Extruder E3D hot end I print TPU at 50 millimeters per second with retractions the Bond Tech BMG Extruder I guess that's a very good extruder but not direct drive E3D hot end it's got an upgraded hot end I guess is that is that, is that saying it seems like the biggest thing even the mini CR10 has a much bigger bed size yeah Ender 3 doesn't have dual stepper driver, doesn't have 24 volts, is not direct drive, cannot resume print. Are those all pros, Paul? Paul, are those pros of the CR10? You're asking this question, but I'm not sure if you're saying that's what's going on. I think, I think, Brent, I think I'm going to waver on my commitment to direct drive. And if I need to, I'll just, I'll just buy a direct drive extruder and put, swap it in. Yeah. So let's say that the new the requirements for it are a 220 millimeter uh, cubic bed volume minimum, $300 price, and does not need a direct drive extruder out of the box. Ender can resume print and is 24 volts. Any cubic i3 mega for $299. I think we looked at that. Let's go back to that one as we're dialing in the requirements. And I hope that as we sort of... Well, the analogy that comes to my mind is just spiral the drain. But that we come back around to these concepts and they kind of start to click in my head at least. And I'll be able to better uh, – we'll get value out of this this exercise. So we mentioned that the Anycubic i3 Mega has a, a stamped steel frame. It's not going to be as stiff of a frame. Um, Brent, you kind of didn't like the touchscreen interface. You'd rather be using uh, the OctoPrint on the back end to manage the printing. It, it seems like a good thing, but then they're going to leave features out that you're going to want. And you're just going to not use it anyway. Potentially. You know, it, every every uh, manufacturer that puts out a printer with a touchscreen interface, they're all slightly different. So it's hard to say exactly what you're going to get without actually trying it. You know? <laughs> Jacques Albrecht says, listen, I have eight machines. Buy the Ender Pro. Okay, Jacques, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, Jacques. If we just say, buy the Ender Pro, that's not, I mean, that you might pick the right printer, but I, I want to know why right. it's better. I want everybody watching the live stream to be able to know why it's better and what we're thinking about, not just take my word for it. So here's the Anycubic. It's got the it's got the, the patented bed. How much is that glass bed going to cost, the, the patented whatever bed? I mean, How much is that going to cost aftermarket? The, the Ender 3 are like 16 bucks or something. Oh, not much. So nothing. The Anycubic is 210 by 210 by 205. That is technically smaller than the 220, but I'd probably let that slide. Automatic printing pause. It's got filament detection, but you said half the time, some of the time that doesn't work anyway, and you don't use it, and you kind of don't like it. So just make sure your filament doesn't run out. Yeah, this one's not blowing me away. Guys in the chat, what should we be thinking about with the Anycubic? What kind of things do you guys notice about it? Ender 3 Pro runs silent and glass bed. Also has thermal runaway on the silent board. Ender 3 Pro. Better frame, 50% of the price, and also can resume print. This Anycubic looks like it might be harder to work on, too, because of the the frame and the way the electronics are you know, in the case like that. Everything's not exposed on the ender. It's really easy to get to everything. I, uh, I, having worked with tiny, tight quadcopters, I appreciate that way more than yeah, uh, yeah. You, you might think. Yeah. Okay. So I'm leaning away from this one. I'm leaning away from this one. Chris1974 wants to know, Brent, whether you'd prefer to print on glass or a mirror. What about it? What uh, about I've always it? used uh, borosilicate you know, glass. I've never used mirror. Okay. Esper says, I'd stay away from a machine that uses linear rails for its x-axis. Esper, uh, I assume you're talking about the Anycubic. What do you mean by linear rails for the x-axis versus a, what versus what? Brent, any idea? Um, versus, let's see. 
that that any cubic doesn't have linear rails. It just has the the rods that you know slides on with bearings. Um, oh, okay. It's driven by a belt. This it looks like this belt yeah. drives the z-axis on it, as opposed to a, a threaded rod side to style. Uh, they're typically always the belt that drives the the y-axis. Yeah. Um, okay. Mm. Mm. Esper says, "Sorry, wrong terminology." Okay. So I think we're leaning away from the any cubic for various reasons. We're going to end up back at the ender. Just um, let's take one more pass. Let's see. Looking in the looking in the chat, uh, looking in the chat for other suggestions. Uh, Thor Wright says the Sovol SV01 is just a direct drive CR10. So let's let's take one more pass by the Sovol SV01 with our newfound knowledge. It has the it has the Ender style frame with the extruded aluminum. It's direct drive right out of the box. It's two sixty nine. Looks pretty well exposed. Is this is this the sweet spot? It's not an Ender, but it looks very very similar to the Ender in a lot of ways. And maybe maybe some of the upgrades would and and, and community would transfer over. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a direct drive Ender with a bigger bed. Mm, is this the one chat? What about the power supply? Is it 24 volts? Can't tell. Auto, it, it can take an auto-leveling sensor. Mm. Chat, what, what do you think? If I got the uh, SV01, would I be making a huge mistake? Zero FPV doesn't like the fact that it's direct drive. Well, I mean, for yeah. You would give up Creality support. No. How come the Ender 5 gets no love? Well, I think that's too expensive. Yeah. I think that's going to be over our price point. So I've, I've, I've drawn the line at about 300 bucks because I think that's what most people will find accessible. The first review on this uh, Soval or whatever says what the Ender 3 Pro should have been but wasn't. <laughs> there you go, guys. That's going to be... Um, one person points out, Stephen Rossi says, any Ender content you make is going to be buried by dedicated 3D printing channels. That's true, Stephen. My goal in making this content would not necessarily be to pick up new subscribers, but to provide value to my existing subscribers who are following in my footsteps. Sovol is 24 volts? Yeah, 24 volts. And it, yeah, it has the dual Z motors also. Dual Z motors? Oh, I'm liking this. I'm leaning this direction. You could do an Direct drive upgrade to the Ender in under an hour for free, says Mike Grizzik. But, Mike, we still wouldn't have the dual Z-axis that, that, that the Sovol brings to the table. Trib points out that the, that, the C, that the Sovol beats the CR-10 because it doesn't have a control box. Yeah, that I, like, the thing that I like not having the separate control box. It's all just built into the frame. It's mm -hmm. easier to move around, like, you know, if you have to move a CR10 or that style printer with the separate control box, it's just it's like awkward and clumsy and yeah. Tritone FPV points out there is a dual Z axis upgrade for the Ender. What are we going to spend for that, and how much time is it going to cost to put on Tritone? Thirty five bucks and uh, under an hour to change the extruder, right? Is that right, Brent? Yeah. So thirty five bucks and under an hour to change the extruder on an Ender to direct drive. How much? How much for to do the direct to do this dual Z axis upgrade? That's the question. Uh, 50 bucks. You, you don't need dual Z axis at all, says Esper. Yeah, Unless I really don't think. Yeah, because like it, it seems fine without Like I don't have the dual on my CR10 and I've yeah. tons of stuff on that. And it's been no problem. Like it's a nice to have, I think. I've I've keyed in on the dual Z axis because that was one of the first features that I noticed and was like, oh, I understand that. So now I think that's like the most important thing, just because it was the first one that I recognized. <laughs> okay, so dual Z not needed. Okay, people are still going back to the Ender Three just because of its popularity, but I'm not necessarily sold that 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 someone should get that if they can get a better value for their time out of something like the Soval. The Soval looks pretty good. Uh, all right, guys, I'm leaning toward the Soval. Ben Madge 66, why do I want something cheap? Yeesh, the boy has a Mustang. It's not a real Mustang for the record. It's a, it's a four-cylinder turbo, turbocharged. Um, because my goal here is not to buy the best 3D printer for me to get a good experience. My goal is to buy a 
printer that will let me follow in you guys follow in my footsteps. Ghost Branch is still weighing in for the Ender 3 Pro. It says it prints TPU perfectly with no problems. Oh man. Okay, so let's 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 talk about the thing we haven't talked about yet, and that is the software. There's there's design software and there's slicer software. Mm -hmm. Can you can you break down for us what is like Fusion 360 or SolidWorks, and then what is a slicer? So the slicer is basically so okay. Yeah, well, I'll back up. Well, Fusion 360, which is what I use um, because I don't have Windows machines and SolidWorks is too expensive. Um, <laughs> you know, that's where you're going to go in. You're going to you create your designs and ultimately end up with an STL file, right? Okay. You take that STL file and you over to your slicer. And what the slicer does is it looks at that STL file and it it converts it to uh, instructions for the printer, how to print this thing. So it literally slices it into layers and dictates how it lays down the filament to make each one of those layers. And there's, you know, a hundred different settings that you can tweak um, in the slicer to dictate all sorts of things um, with that print. And um, that's probably one of the, the biggest learning curves for sure in 3D printing. Like um, a lot of people get in 3D printing and they just start off with like Cura or something, which they kind of attempt to hide all the settings from you basically. Um, so it's very like, uh, I'm not saying it's not powerful because it does do a lot of things. You can get to all the settings. Obviously, it's just like clicking a gear or whatever, but they don't put them right on your face. Like, here's all the things you can tweak. They just want you to like drop it in, click slice, click print, you know? And for a lot of basic stuff, that works fine. Um, but when you get into uh, more difficult prints that need, you know, special changes to the setting in order for things to come out the right way or to be, you know, as strong as you want them to be, whatever. Um, then yeah, there's a lot of settings in there to learn and, and it, it takes a while to know what changing, what, how it affects certain things, whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and there are predefined profiles for some of these printers, right? That where you just basically say, I'm, I'm printing TPU on an Ender 3 and the yeah. slicer just goes, okay. But basically all that does is, um, dictates like the bed size, uh, what like what corner it homes on, um, you know, whether it's Cartesian or uh, um, uh, Delta, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Ben, ben Madge 66 is making a really good point in the chat. He says, Jake's Joshua, you pay for what you get. The Prusa Mini is only $50 more than the Sovol, and it's got all the bells and whistles. The biggest thing you give away with the Prusa Mini would be the print volume, but maybe that doesn't matter quite as much. Uh, ben Madge, I think you're making a very compelling point that for for me as somebody who's kind of starting out in 3D printing, let's for, may, bed volume maybe shouldn't be a driver. The overall, I mean, if I, if I have a great experience and I want a bigger bed, I can go another direction. But um, maybe the right way to go with this is to get the plain old Ender 3, for um 229 and come in uh, everybody is saying don't don't even look at printers under 200 bucks yeah. so maybe a plain old ender 3 for 229 and a prusa mini at 350 and see how those sort of compare that's interesting yeah should you buy a let me ask you this brent and obviously you haven't i don't think you i don't think anybody has the prusa, prusa mini yet i don't uh, think it's out uh, yet but it, should anybody be looking at a printer uh, in the three hundred dollar price range, when they could just get a Prusa Mini for three fifty, probably not. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, like I, I'm excited for that printer. I think it's going to be really solid for for the money spent. You know, so yeah, it's definitely worth looking into. If you want to just print stuff, not tinker with the damn printer, upgrade it, that sort of thing, then I think that's definitely a solid choice. Okay, I think that's the direction I'm leaning. I think I think what we're going to do is. We're going to get a Prusa, 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 sponsor me. No, they don't know I exist. I think I'm going to get a Prusa Mini for 350 bucks, and I'm going to get just a basic Ender 2 Bowden drive. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put them together and try and just run some prints on them and see if it's true. Can you get a decent TPU print out of a, out of a, you know, an Ender? Uh, we're going to find out. Yeah. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, great. So now we've, we've done it. We've kind of we've kind of dialed it in, and then 
with the Ender 3, you guys knew I was going to get the, I mean, I think that <laughs> it was going to be hard to convince me not to get the Ender 3 be, just because it's got such a big community and it's it's pretty clearly a, a good budget choice. Um, I'm a little tempted to say, well, should I be recommending or should I be picking something else for other people out there who may not want it, the experience of screwing around with it? Um, it does seem like the Sovol SVO1 is a, is a solid choice, uh, kind of like an upgraded Ender with direct drive. And if I were just buying for myself and not the internet, I might go with that one. Maybe, maybe I'll end up with that one too. But um, And then we'll try and just see how they go. And I'll, Brent, I'll be reaching out to you some more for help. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, let's see. Let's see. I think it feels like, yeah, Seven Biker Boy says, donate a printer to me, please. Yeah. Um, let's see. Brent, what filaments do you use? What TPU do you use? Filament, obviously, different brands of filament have different results. What do you use? Uh, Stain Smart, 100%. Uh, everything else that I've tried has just not worked as well. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, of the you know, hundreds of rolls that I've purchased and printed over the years, um, 99% of that was Saint Smart TPU. Okay, sorry, I'm answering a chat message. Um, Ghost Branch FPV says, I feel like you missed a lot of important info because the chat goes by so fast. I definitely agree. It's very hard to do a live stream chat and interview because I'm like thinking about what Brent's saying. I'm thinking about the printer and the chat is, is just one of many things. So here's what we're going to do. Before I make a final decision, I will chat with my patrons in the Discord and try and dial some more things in. And I'm also going to make like a 15-minute version of this live stream for people who just want the good stuff and try and dial in what the – so I'll, I'll announce what if, – if anybody manages to change my mind in the in the patron chat, I'll, I'll announce that in that video. But um, um, anything – let's see. Let me think. Uh, Brent, before we sign off, it feels like we're starting to wrap up. Um, anything else uh, you think that people should be thinking about or anything you think we've overlooked? Um. I think there's definitely more to discuss around. I mean, a, a big part of this is the, the stuff that people are printing, right? Um, you have two kinds of people, uh, the ones that are just going to Thingiverse and downloading, you know, file and printing that. And then the other people who are you know, designing their own stuff, you know, um, and that that's like a whole uh, uh, different topic um, is, uh, just the process of making your own your own it's stuff. It's really easy to design a part to do what you want, but it's not as easy to design a part that does what you want but prints well. You know, a lot of times people send me these files, and I'm like, oh my god, this is going to be a nightmare to print because whoever designed this was. And not they're like, they're that. like, no, you don't have to do any of the design work. Just print it for me. It'll be easy. Why yeah. are you charging me more money? <laughs> right, right. So like things like. <laughs> just designing things so that they don't, you don't have to use supports when printing it makes it better. You know, um, thinking about orientation of the object, you know, on the print bed when it's printing it dictates, you know, how one part of the print might be strong and the other part might not be, uh, you know, because of layer adhesion and all this sort of stuff. Like there's tons of things to think about when, when doing that. Some people are reminding that uh, with, with TPU filament dry, keeping it dry and storing it correctly is important. It won't print well when it's got moisture in it. Um, I, I remember at race day quads, they keep their filament in these little plastic totes with, with silica in it to, to keep it dry. Uh, um, I have all my filament sitting on a rack right here in my garage. I'm going to guess that you go through it fast enough that it doesn't. That's not an issue. That's just my guess. Some, Do of, you it, print? some of the colors like sit around for a while. And the, the less and you don't dry it? No. And then let's see. Where's my. Mm. It, well, so. The humidity is twenty two percent right now, so slow humidity. Where do you live? Right here. Yeah. Where are you where are you at? Uh Northern California. Oh, so it's not as humid there as it is like here in the southeast. Yeah. Um, I, I, I should get some super chats out of the way. They, that we had a few super chats, so we didn't have a ton, but um, I'll get these out of the way before we close the stream up. License to drive. Thanks for two pounds. That was his fill. That was his drying and storing filament. Michael Blackstrom. Uh, thank you for fifty Swedish kroner. Buy the AnyCubic so I can follow your vids and learn to flex print. Uh, yeah. Black, I, I have to tell you, I was I was tempted by the AnyCubic at first, but look, comparing it to like the Sovol, I think the Sovol is the better choice yeah. for for TPU for sure. 
It's, um, what's the best TPU printer, not price limited? Black Raids FPV, thank you for 20 Swedish Kroner. I mean, Brent, it's got not price limited. I mean, it's got to be the Prusa, right? Prusa Mark III. Is that the best for TPU? That's not direct drive either, is it? Uh, yeah, it is. It is. Right? Wait. Mine's all modified. I have the multi-material <laughs> So, I, mean, I mean, you could go even higher. There's printers out there for two, three, four thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, are they going to be if you if you had no no limit on price and you bought a five thousand dollar printer, would you be getting anything that you don't get in a thousand dollar printer other than just like bigger bed volume? Well, it's funny because I, I have uh, a handful of friends that work for, you know, companies that do various kinds of manufacturing and they have these, you know, fifty hundred thousand dollar printers you know in their offices and they're like uh those things don't print any better than this some stuff you're doing you know but they have like on-site support and guys that will come out and you know and uh, do maintenance and stuff on them and things like that you know so it's funny maybe, maybe they can they can run 24 hours a day for 10 years and never need maintenance but yeah, the actual it, prints you pump out yeah these, like centered laser ones that you know print metal parts and like that's those are the ones that do crazy stuff but as far as just fdm like really you hit a point where it just doesn't really get a lot yeah. better you know? it's it feels to me uh, like like price no object for a home user the the prusa mark three is is for the place to be and you're just not going to get much better than that yeah um, and, and most people probably are going to come in cheaper and still get good results with, with more work. So, all righty, that's it for the super chats. So here's what we're going to do. That's my current leaning. Thank you, Brent, for coming by and, and, and spending some time with us. We're going to wrap the stream up. I'm going to do some more chatting with my patrons over in the 3d printing channel on my discord server. If you want to join the discord server, hang on a second, let me switch scenes here. There we go. If you want to join the Discord server, uh, you could do that by becoming a patron. Link down below. I want to thank Brent again and give Brent company a plug, BMC 3D. Uh, if you need not just 3D printing, like if we go to the product section here, you pick your you pick your quadcopter and you can get accessories for your quad. And Brent, you design all of these. He's a hell of a designer. But if you have custom products that you want printed. Or if you just want, and this is something I'm not sure many other companies do, if you just want a custom design done, Brent, you'll do that as well. Um, yeah. Just tell him what you want and he'll make it for you. It will obviously cost money, but yeah. uh, that's a service he offers. And the quality of your prints are quite good. And when I did a 3D printing shootout, the fact that your cutoff for free shipping was 15 bucks. It's not hard to get above 15 bucks, and that actually meant you were the cheapest because other people were paying 8 10 12 bucks for shipping. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, but that's going to do it for this one. I will make a video and announce on my channel, uh, which printer I'm going to, or printers I'm going to get. Um, but we're going to wrap up for now. Thank you, Brent. Uh, and chat, anything else? Anything last, anything final before we go? Oh man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. Yes. People do put TPU in an oven, Robert Rayner. If you just kind of bake it at, on low for six hours. It gets all the water out of it. Okay. Oh, and Ciotti. Okay, so before we wrap up, and we are going to wrap up because I think we're pretty much wrapped up. You guys, Ciotti FPV is going to start his saying he'll start his stream early. He does a stream after me, and he's – what are you doing today, Ciotti? Is it a typical Q&A? He's fixing shit. Okay. I also want to tell you guys there's a stream happening this evening in a few hours. Live you FPV, L-I-V-Y-U, live you FPV. Uh, he is going to be doing, let me just paste it into the chat so you guys can find it. He is going to be doing, he's going to be comparing receiver modules in uh, TBS Fusion, in Rapid Fire, and I think he's got a clear view. And he's going to be exposing the truth about the receiver modules that these guys all use. He is an electronics whiz. Here's his live stream. That is in three hours from now. So basically, spend the whole Sunday afternoon. Don't watch football. Is it football? It's not, I don't think it's even football. No, it is. I'm not a sports guy. <laughs> spend the whole afternoon on my live stream, then watch Ciotti's live stream, and then watch uh, Leave You's live stream. Uh, but that's going to do it for this one, guys. I'm going to sign off. Thank you guys for coming out. Uh, and, uh, that's, I'm out of here. Thanks, Brent. Bye-bye. Awesome. Awesome.